from the depth instant tutorial AI and detection AI maneuvers and fire your weapons because it contains a brain I'm not kidding it actually is containing a brain to show you how to set up AI we will build a new AI on this little boat there are prefabs you can use as well but the main part of the AI is the mainframe it's the one that contains a brain then we have connectors. The connectors are used to connect up other parts to your AI. Then we have general processing cards. When we add detection to our system, it requires processing power. In order to have a lot of different types of detection, we need to have a couple of general processing cards. Now the mainframe costs 300 and all of the other parts are relatively cheap, except the processing card which cost 100 material each so don't use more of these than you have to but use enough so that your detection works at full speed you need to set up your AI specific to the craft you are making to set up your AI you go to any of the AI block and click Q and you get up this menu inside here you can add behavior and there are different type of behaviors like attack run with flyover broadside, circle, hover, a lot of different, ram even. So we will add circle and click on this thing and it will stay active. So select the behavior that most represents your vehicle's combat style you want to make. And under adjustments we can adjust some different approaching angle and combat distance as well as altitude. If you're making a flyer here we can change kind of the altitude where we're flying at but we will make uh, more detailed videos about how to set up specific AIs under the videos on how to make such crafts under maneuver you can select uh, how it will maneuver the craft you click add maneuver and you will select the type of craft that your ship uh, most represents this thing is a ship so make sure it is active and here we can also allow some specific settings under additional we can set up additional behaviors but for that we need additional cards so when you have set up this you can just close down this menu inside here you have AI card slots the AI card slots are necessary to be able to connect up uh, more behavior cards and also specific configurations so if you go to behavior and AI here you have behavior routines. If you add additional behavior routines, when we go into the AI here and go to additional, we can set up four more additional routines. Like for example, if I want it to be a sailing craft, I'll need to set up a sailing routine here. Now, this isn't a sailing craft, but you get the point. Here we also have aim point selection and target prioritization. Inside here you can set it to for example target blocks above water which is usual for cannon based crafts and you can also set it to target cluster of blocks instead of random blocks or target hot blocks if they can find it. Under the target prioritization card you can select what type of weapon this should focus on taking down for example if you want to focus on missiles we can max that out. You can basically slide around here with all these sliders and select what it will prioritize to destroy and what it will not prioritize to destroy. Very handy. Almost all crafts should have target prioritization and aim point selection cards. It helps. If you are feeling really lazy, you can go down to the plug and play cards. Here, for example, we instead of setting it up ourselves, we can go here and select circling ship AI and just plug it on here. Now uh, you can see that this maneuver we set up at before is no longer active because our simple AI card overrides it. So it can be very handy. And if you just use one of these plug and play cards, you don't need to set it up yourself and can be great for new players. However, the additional routines are still active. In order for our craft to be able to detect enemies and as well as shoot at them, we need some kind of detection. 
We'll go in a little bit more detail later on what type of detection we can use and on some easy setups you can also copy. But we just throw on a radar here. Now the radar can detect enemies, uh, so radars and cameras and sonars can detect enemies, but then we have tracker, like radar tracker, laser rangefinder and stuff like that. These ones, they track targets that are already detected, but they can't detect target themselves. But it's great to have both trackers and detectors to be able to both detect early and then track accurately your enemies. Now, as you might understand, it might be a little bit unconvenient to use connectors all over your build. So, in order to connect up stuff, you'll need a wireless transmitter, which can be connected anywhere on the AI. If you click Q, you can change the channel this transmits on, but usually it makes no sense to have things running on different channels. For most builds, you will have everything on the same channel. But if they are on different channels, they might not always communicate. So uh, you can now pop down a local weapon controller. Now this is of course great for controlling weapons. And here we can drop down a um, receiver. And since this is also on channel 1, these are now connected. We can even, if we want to, connect up a connector here in order to connect up more of these general processing cards. And here you can of course add uh, additional detection or tracking components. And on the local weapon controller, well, let's just plop down a simple little turret here. Beautiful. Inside the local weapon controller, you can set some limitations on range or altitude on the target. So maybe we don't want it to target underwater targets. Well, then we can set this to zero instead of negative uh, 50. You can also set up a weapon to only uh, take information from, say, sonars if you're having torpedoes. If your craft may shoot itself, it's a smart idea to hook up a failsafe to the system. You can also edit the limitations of this failsafe and increase or decrease the margin. Alright, and uh, looking exactly like the wireless receiver, we have the intro vehicle transmitter. This can be a smart thing to have uh, on all your vehicles and they will communicate with each other uh, to exchange the detection and tracking information on the enemies, making all your crafts more accurate. And if you click C, as in uh, Caesar, you can get up the AI control. Here, for example, in Designer, I can set this to God mode, making it indestructible. I can turn on and off, it will fire on the enemy, and I can disable movements, and I can also set it to patrol mode. And just back to the automatic uh, preset routine card. And as you can understand, our tracking and detection is pretty awful. We see the enemy, but we're not very accurate. So right now we usually miss. But we are going to look a little bit more closely at detection and some preset uh, setups you can use. So going in here and detection components, you can see we basically have different categories. We have cameras, we have IR cameras, we have sonars and we have radars. Sonars are great for underwater, cameras is the best all around, IR cameras is best for fast targets, radar is great for long range. And that's basically how it goes. Now detectors and trackers are different. Detectors, like cameras and radars and sonars, they need free line of sight in the actual direction they're going out from. So inside here we have a camera. And you can see it sees straight here, so the path is clear here. But the path is not clear here. You can see exactly this, this little block would need to be a hole. Line of sight left out of the vehicle is blocked. So only because we have one block here, it is blocked. Very sad. So that's how detectors work. They need a free line of sight in all the five directions or one direction they can see in. And all other blocks like this one here, this one there, this one there, this one here, it doesn't matter. Uh, which makes it so that we can put a camera behind a tube of these uh, portholes. We can also put a radar inside a tube of air. Trackers, uh, like the camera tracker here, they actually require free line of sight. So I've enclosed it in a little glass bubble here, which offers some protection. And this one, 
like gimbal trackers, they need actual line of sight. So you can see this little blob here, it actually blocks its line of sight exactly there. Uh, which makes it so that the trackers will usually be a little bit more exposed. And we could put like uh, this thing, the camera. We can put the camera inside the glass bubble as well, it works fine. But we could not put a tracker. So if we put uh, this one, a camera tracker inside of here, almost all angles will be blocked for it. Because the trackers, they look at actual line of sight. So uh, that's how to protect them and their limitations. Also, IR does not see through glass. Now this is not necessarily representative of the size of the vehicles, but here are my five levels. The first level is a 360 camera and a laser rangefinder. The 360 camera is great all around and the laser rangefinder is great at giving you the range. If you look over different components here, you can see that it requires uh, this one, for example, three units of general processing power. And if you look at laser rangefinders, it requires 0.1. So they are uh, differently expensive because uh, you can see general processing card, they give you more general processing power. And the more detection you have, the more of these you need and they're expensive. So do look at the processing power cost of all the detection components before making your choice because otherwise your detection system might turn out to be very expensive. Upgrading this slightly, we have the 360 camera and two laser rangefinders. And then we also have a camera gimbal tracker. The camera tracker gives you great bearing, which is super important for like APS. On my level three, we have added a 360 radar in order to detect enemies at a longer range. And we have also added a radar tracker because we want to be able to track our enemies at longer distances as well. The 90 degree cameras, sonars and radars offer faster detection and also much better bearing. So uh, it might be a smart idea to use the 90 degree stuff if you can afford it and if it's really important that you have uh, accurate detection. So for the level 4 we have finally ditched our 360 camera and we have 90 degree cameras in all the cardinal directions. We also have two camera trackers, a radar and a radar tracker as before. So this would be a great setup for a quite really accurate uh, battleship or something. And then we have my level 5 for those who want to be really accurate and quite redundant. We have two radar trackers, two camera trackers, even though one is telescope, but it's basically the same. We have 90 degree radars and cameras in all direction. And this will give you very nice detection and very nice tracking. We can also have as many laser range finders as we can fit because they're so cheap in general processing power and materials. And that's my basic five levels, but there is more because if you are facing fast targets like fighter jets, you will need IR equipment. The IR cameras, they uh, track things much faster. But look here, the IR camera gimbal trackers gives 40 times detection per second, while the camera gimbal tracker only gives 25. So if you're facing really fast enemies, well, then it's a super good idea to have some IR gimbal and also IR detectors if they're using hot engines while still being very fast and hard to detect by looking at them. So whatever level you choose to go with, if you're facing fast, dangerous targets, or if you're a jet fighter yourself, you absolutely have to have some IR equipment on there in order to intercept other fast targets. Oh, and are you facing submarines? Well, then all of this is useless. You'll need sonars. Here we have 90 degree sonars in all directions, as well as a 360 degree sonar if, uh, you know, you want to be sheep about it. Now here we have a little special detection block. This is the wireless snooper. It picks up the enemy's uh, wireless equipment on board and can make you detect them even though they try to be real stealthy. So if you want to be real stealthy, you should not use any type of wireless transmission and go with a wireless snooper and have uh, things like passive sonars and stuff like that. Then you'll be really stealthy. And all of my five levels are available in the description as a block of text. You can copy this and save to your system so you don't need to think much about what 
detection you should use. And remember that the levels uh, represent the accuracy you need, not the size of the craft. And there we go. I hope you have learned a little bit about AI and detection. And as you might imagine, if your AI is destroyed, your vehicle is waste. You can solve this two ways. Either have several AIs on your build, or protect your AI really well with like heavy armor. Well, in any case, I hope you learned something from this. And if you did, please leave a like and do stay tuned for future videos. This is your host, Jim Reesen, and we're signing out from From the Depth Instant Tutorials.